Hello, Calvin Jones here, Park Tool Company. This video will review the adjustable cup and cone bottom brackets. Both the overhaul and the complete replacement will be reviewed. The term cup and cone refers to the shape of the two races inside that capture the ball bearing. The spindle has a cone shape. The threaded bearing race has a cup shape. Ball bearings are trapped between the cone and cup shapes. The tension between the bearings in these surfaces is called preload. Unlike other bottom bracket designs, the preload on a cup and cone bottom bracket is adjustable using the non-drive side cup. That process will be the final step in this video. If you are not sure what bottom bracket system you have, take a look at our bottom bracket playlist. We will begin with cranks removed. For crank removal, see the Park Tool Crank Playlist. Typical tools for this procedure include appropriate tools to turn the lock ring, adjustable cup, and fixed cup, a headset press to hold the wrench in place if necessary, degreaser and brushes, thread preparation such as anti-seize or thread locker, grease, gloves, and rags. It is a good idea to clean a space on a workbench or table and use a rag or mat to keep your parts organized as you remove them. Inspect the non-drive side of the bottom bracket shell for a cup with an outer lock ring. The ring will typically have several external notches. The Park Tool HCW5 will loosen this lock ring. Arrange the spanner for good mechanical advantage. Use care to keep the wrench in line with the ring. Loosen the outer lock ring counterclockwise and remove it from the cup. Inspect this cup for tool fittings. Depending upon the manufacturer and model, the cup may use different tool fittings such as pinholes. Use the SPA1 or SPA6. Two wrench flats. Use the HCW11. Recess slots. Use the HCW11. 20 internal splines. Use the BBT22 or 32. Large hex flats. Use an appropriate size wrench or an adjustable wrench. Now turn the inner cup counterclockwise using an appropriate tool and remove it. The ball bearings are found behind the cup. They may be in a retainer or cage or they may be loose. Now remove the spindle. Spindles may be longer on one end than the other, so take care to note the left to right orientation. Remove any protective sleeve from inside the shell. Reach through the shell and remove the drive side bearings. The drive side cup should also be removed. This is to make inspection easier and also to make sure it does not seize in the shell. A common drive side cup uses the 36 mm wrench flats. The Park Tool product for this is the HCW4. For the common BSA or English threaded bottom brackets, this is a left hand thread. Turn the tool clockwise to loosen. Note, for bottom bracket shells using the Italian threading standard, both non-drive and drive side are right-hand threads. Inspect the cups for marking stating 36 by 24 to confirm this standard. Turn these counterclockwise to remove. The wrench flats on the cup tend to be very shallow. It can be helpful to hold the wrench in place using a headset press or other similar retaining system to break the cup free. Remove the press once the cup is loose. Continue rotating the cup until it is removed from the shell. Clean inside the shell. If you are installing a cartridge bottom bracket after removing the cup and cone style, see this video. Clean the parts using a degreaser and a clean brush or rag. You may also find a seal in the spindle interface of the cups. 
Carefully remove this for cleaning, noting its orientation as you do. Scrub and wipe each part thoroughly. Inspect for wear and pitting on the cone of the spindle and along the bearing track of the cup. Trace the bearing path with a ballpoint pin. If there is any pitting, it will be felt as roughness as the ball passes over the pits. Pitted or damaged cups or spindles should be replaced. This pitting will only get worse. It does not smooth itself out over time. Inspect the ball bearings. These bearings are harder steel than either the cup or cone. They should look shiny with no visible wear. If they look worn out, the cup and cone will also be bad. If you are replacing bottom bracket components, it is important to note that there are several different dimensions to consider, including spindle taper, spindle width, shell width, and threading standard. Consult the manufacturer for more detail. Grease any seals present in the cups and reinstall them. Thread preparation in the bottom bracket is important. On the drive side, a thread locker such as Park Tool TLR1 will lubricate the threads when tightening and then dry to help seal and secure the cup. Another drive side option is any seize compound, which provides a long term barrier that is more durable than grease. If you have neither of these, at least grease the drive side threads in the frame. Using care not to cross thread the cup, install the drive side cup counterclockwise to the left. For Italian standard threaded shells, install clockwise. Thread it in and secure fully. Again, using a press to hold the wrench secure. Torque on these cups is typically 30 Newton meters. With a hand wrench held at about 15 centimeters from the cups, think of an effort of about 20 kilograms. For thread preparation of the non-drive side threads, use an anti-seize compound or grease. Put a coating inside the shell. Do not use thread locker on the non-drive side. Next, install the drive side bearings onto the spindle. If you're using cage bearings, first apply a layer of grease. Install the cage bearings, noting that there is only one correct orientation. The cage should be installed so the ball bearings run on the bearing surfaces. When the cage is flipped the wrong way, the cage will be rubbing against the bearing surfaces. Apply more grease on top of the installed bearings. For loose bearings, use a heavy coating of grease on the drive side of the spindle. Install the ball bearings on the ball path and cover with more grease. Typically, there are 11 quarter inch ball bearings. The grease should be smoothed down to make installation easier. Carefully insert the spindle through the shell and set the bearings against the drive side cup. Install the protective sleeve into the shell. Pack the non drive side cup with grease and install the bearings, again, keeping cage orientation in mind. Pack more grease on top to cover the bearings. If you are using loose ball bearings, pack the adjustable cup with grease and place in the bearings. They should all lay flat in the cup. 
Cover it with more grease. Thread in the non-drive side cup. Make the first few turns by hand before using your tool in order to avoid cross-threading. Once you feel the cup and ball bearings contact the spindle, stop. The bearing preload and play can be adjusted using the non-drive side cup. The objective is to find the loosest adjustment, but one that still has no play. You will understand the process better by using reference marks during the adjustment. Place some tape on the outer perimeter of the shell and make some reference marks about two to three millimeters apart. As you adjust, you will now have reference and can make incremental changes as needed. Gently turn the adjustable cup back and forth, stopping when you feel contact with the spindle. Back the cup off counterclockwise very slightly, only a few degrees. Use a marker and mark a line on the cup. Or you can use a marking or letter of the manufacturer logo as a reference point. Grease and thread on the lock ring. Hold the cup with the tool and fully tighten the lock ring. The torque is commonly 20 newton meters, which is about 14 kilograms of effort on a hand wrench. Test the initial adjustment by grabbing both ends of the spindle and pulling up and down. Rotate the spindle and check at several points. In this example, there is play. The adjustment is too loose. I can't see it, but there's a slight knocking that can be felt. Loosen the lock ring and move the cup only one reference line clockwise. Secure the lock ring while holding the cup from rotating. Check again for play. It can also be helpful to install and tighten the drive side crank. This effectively extends the spindle and can be used when testing for play. Repeat the process by loosening the lock ring and tightening in small increments until the play is gone and the spindle rotates relatively smooth. When determining smoothness, that's a relative term, and keep in mind there are several factors at play. Bearings need to have some preload to have no knocking. That's the objective. When we turn this spindle by using just our fingers, it might not seem as smooth as we like. But remember, attaching cranks and pedaling, it's going to be just fine. The smoothness will vary depending upon the quality of the bearing surfaces. More expensive parts, are polished and will feel smoother. It's also important to note that worn components have limits in adjustment. If the bearing surfaces are worn and pitted, you may find excessive play at one setting. You go just a little bit more on the adjustment and it's horrible and rough. At this point, these parts are going to need replacing. They're only gonna get worse. Thanks for watching this repair help video from Park Tool. We're constantly adding videos and articles here on YouTube as well as our website at parktool.com. Please give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out. And of course, subscribe for the latest content from Park Tool.